Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel and Gove. Today we're talking about perfectionism, how to get over that, things that are really holding you back when it comes to, I don't have enough time, I can't get this done all the stories that you might be telling yourself. Um, and I brought in Lindsay Brownson. She's a creative entrepreneur, coach, and podcaster. She helps small business owners get energized and organized so they can grow their business without burning out. And yeah, we dive deep into the identity and overwhelm and productivity, and it's a great episode. So let's dive in. Hey, Lindsay, welcome to the show. Hi, Rachel. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Let's dive in. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Awesome. So I am a life and business coach for creative entrepreneurs, and my job is to help them love being business owners. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I work with a lot of creatives who have tons of passion and inspiration and experience a lot of overwhelm and overworking. And so I really help people fall back in love with their business so that they can find that balance of the work they love to do. And also the sense of pride and happiness and joy that comes with being their own boss and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. How'd you get into that? Oh goodness. Well, um, I have been, so I've been an entrepreneur for almost 20 years. We're coming up on that. Did you start Um, when you were four? I know. I love, (laughs) I love telling people that number. It's really such an ego boost for, for you to ask me that question. Yes. I started in my like late teens Um, with my first businesses and actually started in interior design. So I have known my whole life that I wanted to be in some kind of creative business and interiors was a really good way for me to channel um, something that seemed productive and um, potentially successful, like the business side with the creative side. I did not grow up being encouraged to pursue a creative career path. I was encouraged to go a safe route. And so it was kind of my rebellious way of doing my own thing, but blending the two together. Um, So through the years, I was an interior designer for a number of years. Um, I had my own practice. Then my husband and I started a furniture company um, or home furnishings company. It was mostly furniture, which we had for a couple of years. And that's really what catapulted me into an online space. So I was blogging. I was doing videos back in the day. I was, um, building my business on Facebook when that was like, before that was even really a a place to go. It was like, we only had LinkedIn Mm -hmm. back then. And I was like, LinkedIn's not for me. I'm a creative person. So really learning how to use the online space and create a community there, um, which is what I loved doing so much. And so long story short, I parlayed that when we decided not to do the furniture company anymore, logistically, that was not a good fit for either of our personalities. Um, I thought I was just going to go back into interior design. And when I sent out the announcement to my email list that we were closing the shop, I had people actually reach out to me and say, you know, good luck on your next adventures. I loved following your brand. I loved the business. I loved the message that you had. Is there any way you could help me do something like that for my small business? And so it organically and almost immediately catapulted me into a um, brand and marketing consulting position. And then through the years, um, I built that into the coaching practice that I have today. It has been quite the evolution. Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. And I know today we're going to be talking about perfectionism. So let's dive in. Talk to us about perfectionism. Why do we become perfectionists and how does that block us from actually creating momentum? Oh my goodness. Yes. Such good questions. So in my world, the way that I see this, and I know Rachel, for you too, a lot of what you talk about is really the the passion, the purpose, the reason that we start businesses. All of your listeners started their business because they had something special that they wanted to create in their lives and in the world. So there's this impact that we want to make, this quality of life that we want to have for ourselves. And we see this possibility through entrepreneurship that we know we're not going to get anywhere else. But the reality of running a business, once you really start to get into it and it gets growing, the the business running starts to take over the passion and the inspiration purpose. There's just so many moving pieces to a business. 
So and when it feels you, very messy sometimes. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> so messy. And it seems like no matter how many times people like you and I say this, like, yeah, trust us, is it, it's kind of a mess back here. Hot mess. So <laughs> really, it feels so difficult to reconcile that, I think, for what yeah. people are feeling versus what they're seeing. Yeah. But regardless, there's a lot of circumstances of running a business that are challenging. The demands on your time, the the social expectations, our own internal expectations and financial stuff. So the thing about business that I think is really important and this is how we relate to perfectionism. What we see in our business, our business is just truly a mirror, an external reflection of what is going on in our internal landscape. Mm -hmm. So all of the shortcomings that we have as humans, which we all have them, those end up getting amplified as problems in our business. What we can see as legitimate problems um, are just reflections of what's going on. So our bad habits, our crappy belief systems, our negative self-talk, those literally manifest as results in our bottom line, in Mm -hmm. our business. Now, I also think it's important to like come back to the flip side of this too. The beautiful thing about this business being a reflection of us is that we also have these amazing creative ideas that we only can see in our heads. Like we're the creators of this inside of our heads. And then our business is that opportunity for us to communicate those ideas and what matters to us and turn them into something that is really unique and special and has never been done before. So I say the both and no matter what we're talking about, because both are always true. So what I think is important for a business owner is to recognize that our business is just this incredible vehicle for us to create a life that we want by growing who we are. We grow our business by growing ourselves. Yep. And so we need to solve business problems from the inside out. And most of us are spending a lot of our time trying to solve them from the outside in. And we run into- Say that again. That was really good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we spend a lot of our time as entrepreneurs trying to solve problems from the outside in. But what we need to do is solve our business problems from the inside out. Okay. How do we do that? Yeah. (laughs) Great question. So we want to use, like, I love to think about our problems in our business as callings, not problems, ways for us to recognize these tangible things that just become evidence for us, places for us to notice like, oh, this is what feels sticky. Oh, this is what doesn't feel right. And that's just the reminder for you because it, we can't see all that's going on inside of our heads. There's a lot. It's messy in there. There's a lot going on. So our business problems actually give us this really beautiful opportunity to look at something specific and say, I feel called to explore that. Mm -hmm. I feel called to step up and learn how to do this in a better way. So these aren't limitations. They're opportunities for us to clean some stuff up so that we can have more of the things that we really want. Okay. I love seeing just reframing the way that we see problems. Problems are just an opportunity for growth. And that's what business ultimately is. It's like the greatest personal development journey you're ever going to go on. Absolutely. And the truth is that it is painful sometimes to do that. Right. But we internalize that pain as a problem for us as a, as a shortcoming, we internalize the, um, the things that don't work in our life as a personal failure, not just Mm. we tried and failed, but I am a failure. And that's a really dangerous place for us to hang out in. How do we separate that? Like ourselves from our results? Yeah. So, um, I want to give an example is maybe that's, that's a good way to think about this. Um, so when we're talking about time, so this is time management, um, Tell me if you can relate to this at all, but time management seems to be a really big challenge. Um, I especially talk with creatives because so much of the actual thing that they sell has to come from their creativity and creativity takes a lot of time. It also takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So it's a very time consuming business to have um, if you're not allowing for that amount of time. So, but any entrepreneur I think would agree that they have some challenges with time, especially solopreneurs. Um, And a lot of the things that I hear, so just to give some like relatable thoughts, um, things like I'm too busy, 
or mm -hmm. I don't have enough time, or I need clarity. I just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always behind. Or another really great one for lots of creatives, like I'm just good on a deadline. Mm -hmm. And we have these, these belief systems, these thoughts that we kind of roll through and we practice thinking all of these thoughts that we don't have enough time, that it's just true. I'm not good with my time or I'm scattered, I'm disorganized, I'm unfocused. Um, and when we think those things, we feel helpless or we feel scarcity of that time. And the way that it translates is that we don't plan for things or we plan with unrealistic expectations. We plan for something to get done in an impossible amount of time, mm -hmm. or we omit all of the other things that could get in the way, like our children needing our attention, like the husband's car breaking down and needing to go pick him up. Um, there's so many things we just kind of forget about when we're trying to plan our time. Um, we don't show up for the things that we schedule. We plan to do something and we just don't do it. Um, so we, we have these thoughts, we feel that scarcity, we produce these actions of not, not planning or for, not planning for our own success in this area. And then we experience rushing, failing to achieve those things or pushing our ideas or pushing other things out into the future. So we just perpetuate the cycle because then we internal all of that, internalize all of that. We make it mean that we are bad with time. We make it mean that we are failing, that we are not cut out to be business owners. So this separation, as you're asking, is the, the most, one of the most important things that I think you can start to do is to pay attention to those I am statements that mm -hmm. you're making. So the actionable piece of this, I think if we're looking just at this example of time, is to start to be more intentional with your time and how you want to spend it and how you did spend it. We first have to know what we've been doing to know what we can do differently, but just pay attention to where you think like, oh, I did it again, or this disruption is coming in. Well, I have to answer the phone call because I don't want someone to think that I don't care about them, hmm. or I'm a bad mom. I'm a bad business owner. I'm, I'm a bad um, coach. So any of those, I am statements, those are, that's really the first place to start. So I think, um, look at where you're saying that you are something and decide that, that that's not true. Separate your behavior from your identity. What you do is simply the, the response to how you're feeling. It's a reaction to what you've been thinking about and feeling, and it's always changeable. It's always something that you can do differently next time, but only if you're willing to believe that you are not that. Okay. Not so that thing. We catch it in our head. And then what's the next thing that we can do to stop that cycle? Cause it feels like a lot of times we get stuck in our head and then it's it like cr the craziness of <laughs> what goes on in there and everyone has it. And like, we all have our own like inner battles that we're facing. So how do we actually flip it? So it helps us. Yeah. I think the best way to do this is to write it down. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the questions that I, I love asking is like, what are my thoughts about time or what are my thoughts about money? So I like to take a piece of paper and just write the word time at the top of the paper and write down everything that comes to mind. Just download all of it. I don't have enough of it. I'm not good with it. I don't follow through all of those things. And then you can go back through and check all of those thoughts and see where you're identifying that that is something that is you. You want to challenge the thought. Mm -hmm. That's really it. It's so simple. You just challenge that thought and you ask, is this really true? Mm -hmm. Can I prove it without a shadow of a doubt that I am bad with time? Mm -hmm. Like I'm always behind a statement like that. Is that true? Have you ever been on time? Mm -hmm. Have you been on time for anything this week? Um, I never follow through. Is that true? Did you follow through on everything except for these three items on the list? Mm -hmm. um, really like use this work for your own advantage. Mm -hmm. 
like use this to help you really love yourself more and love your business more rather than using it to look for the areas where you are falling short. Got it. So I think downloading like the, the whole list of things that you think that you are thinking about in a given moment. So this can take 15 seconds up to a minute. This is not like spend a whole day and planning this out. This is for all my uh, perfectionist people who relate to perfectionism. Um, this is not something that you spend a lot of time in. You just start to put some practices in place that help you create that awareness. So disrupting the pattern is is a huge thing because as soon as you can disrupt it, you can catch it. You can make a different choice as long as you believe that you have the ability to make the choice and the behavior and that it's not inherently who you are. Mm -hmm. So just separating the identity from the behavior. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Um, for sure. What about overwhelm? We tell ourselves the story of like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. I'm so overwhelmed. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I like to do this exercise called a time audit. So again, I think I mentioned this a minute ago, like we've got to go backward a little bit, not like way back into our past, but just backward a little bit to see, to give us a baseline of what we're working with here. So a time audit, the reason I say audit is because you do want to look at what you've already done. We can also do time studies to say like, oh, I'm going to write down what I what I do today and follow it for the next week. But I think it's most helpful for you to go back just into the previous week. Mm -hmm. So pull up your calendar, refresh your memory on the things that you did, um, and ask yourself some, some really good questions. How did you spend your time? What did you start? What did you finish? Um, what progress did you make on the things that are important to you? What setbacks did you have? And how much time did you allow for something versus how much time did it actually take you? Mm -hmm. And also how much energy did you allow for something to take you versus how much energy did it really take you? Mm -hmm. And so this is, I think, the biggest area where we're going to uncover some of those perfectionist tendencies of mm -hmm. over planning, over expecting things of ourselves and not actually accounting for what is true for us, what we what we do have the resources for in that time. And then as you're moving forward into your next week, um, okay, so those, those are the questions, sorry, before I jump to the next week. Um, I think just really coming down to like, what do I think went really well last week? What didn't go so well? And what can I do differently? What do I have the ability and the choice to control moving forward? Those three things to look at as sort of your summary evaluation of your time audit, that's going to give you a lot to work with mm -hmm. moving forward. And then when you move into the next week, you're looking at what the results are or what are the outcomes that you're wanting to create with your week. So I always like to set an intention for the week. So actually, how do I want to feel this week? What do I want my week to be like? And then an outcome. What are the things that I want to, at the end of this week, whether we say it's Friday at 4 PM or whatever time frame we give ourselves to like, give us a stopping point. Like, what do I want to look back and say, I'm happy with that. Hmm. That's what I wanted for my week. And those are the things that you put into your calendar. Those are the things that you want to plan your time around is the outcomes that you're trying to create, not the tasks that you need to get done. Mm -hmm. And I think so. Oh, one, yeah, go ahead. One of the things I see happen a lot is like some of our students might be planning out their week and they think it's going to take a lot less time than it does. And then when it, they don't have the task done and it goes like overflow, they kind they might get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you help them plan just accordingly of like, okay, if, if, it, if it's going to take a little longer than you anticipated or a lot longer, this is like the next step for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I want people to remember that the goal of all of this, having a business, living our lives, doing work that is impactful in the world, the goal of all of it is happiness, mm -hmm. right? So this is our starting point. That's if really good. <laughs> Cause I think a lot of people are like, no, I just created it to make money, but then you make money and, and then what? Yeah. Right. Like you, you'll want to make more money and make more money. And if you're never happy and never fulfilled, then what's the point? Right. Exactly. Yeah. 
you're missing the whole point. If that's yeah. all that matters is what you're producing. So that I think is an important jumping off point for planning realistically, planning for your future self. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like to tell people never hold your future self to a standard, like don't set them up for, for failure, set them mm -hmm. up for success, right? If you are planning unrealistically, your future self is the one paying the price. Mm -hmm. And your future self is the one who's going to be like the rock star accomplishing the thing. So why would you set them up for failure ahead of time? Mm -hmm. So looking at this, you want to be happy. Ultimately, you want to enjoy your life. So creating within the bounds of what you can actually do and being willing to be happy with where you are in that process is, is paramount. That's mm -hmm. the thing that we need to be really clear about. So, um, yeah, if what you you've done is you've planned something unrealistic, you failed to meet that expectation or, um, perfectionist tendencies, uh, look at, we met the expectation, but we failed all these other expectations, right? Mm -hmm. So I may have accomplished the thing, but I, these are all the things I didn't get done. Mm -hmm. Remember your goal is happiness, right? How are you going to be happy if you're never letting yourself feel good about what you've done? Hmm. That's good. <laughs> I think another thing to consider too, is, um, sometimes we have this like high level of ambition and urgency to get there because we are intrinsically afraid that we're not good enough and that getting there is going to make us feel good enough. Mm. And recognizing that, again, the reason for doing the things that we want to do with our life is so that we can have a meaningful impact, so that we can have a certain quality of life. It's if we are intentionally planning the goals that we set for ourselves. If we're intentionally planning how many clients we want or how many people we want in our program. And if we're really clear on what that means to us, what we're really here to do, then we get less urgent. We get less graspy about how quickly we have to get there or how it needs to look in a particular way. And we can come back to that sense of purpose. So if something does truly take you two weeks to do, and you've only given yourself a week for it, then you've got to be willing to come back and say, okay, I'm going to give myself another week to do it, right? Like who ultimately cares? You're going to get to the goal either way. You can either get there being happy or you can get there being miserable. Mm -hmm. But if you get there being miserable, then you'll just come up with new things to be miserable about mm -hmm. and continue on in that cycle. So if you can give yourself some leeway now, if you can settle in and enjoy the process now, you will get where you want to go and you'll have the benefit of having the experience and living the way that you want to be living in the process. Hmm. Awesome. Um, how do you plan your week for results? So I like to, I like to pick three results that I'm creating each mm -hmm. week. One of them is always a health and wellness result. So it's about taking care of myself through the week. Um, the way that I do it, there's uh, the, the most fun way, the most probably um, common way that I encourage people to do it is to come up with, um, so you, you choose your three results. By the end of Friday, I want to have accomplished these three things um, or outcomes. And then you work your way backward to what are the, the necessary elements? What are the to-dos, the items that need to get done in order for that result to happen. Um, and then when I, so if I can think in that like linear of a pattern, sometimes this works really well. And other times like we have human brains. So depending on our hormone level, how much sleep we've been getting, how happy we are in the moment, all, there's so many things that will impact how well we can focus. But mm -hmm. yeah, my husband says, don't mess with me if I'm hungry or tired. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes. So if you can look at your three goals and it doesn't have to be three, but like I, they, they've got to be something that you can actually accomplish in a week's time. So already, I think if we're being really honest with ourselves, we know what we can or can't accomplish. Most of us overschedule ourselves just because we're not willing to admit that we can't accomplish like these big chunks of things in within the realistic time frame. 
Um, but once you are willing to see that and look at three things that you really can do this week and be happy about decide ahead of time that you're going to be thrilled with that exactly as it is, then you work your way backwards and you just say, okay, for goal one, um, these are all of the steps that I'll need to take. They don't have to be in order when you're writing them down. It's just like, I think that if I want to, um, by Friday, I want to get my new my podcast episode live, then here are all the, the components that will go into that. And you write it down in that way. And then you can start to prioritize and map them out throughout your week. Um, so I do that for each of my three things. And then I go through and look at my calendar, what's actually on my calendar. So like I see clients one-to-one, -one, have a podcast that I work on, you know, have the family life. I don't start work before 11. I don't work after four. Um, I put my workouts on the calendar, all the things that are important to my life and my well-being overall, those go on the calendar first. And then I plug in the things that I need to do um, for each of those goals next. Um, so it's, it's in that reverse order. I think most people do it the opposite, right? We put the things on the calendar first to do, and then we put our own needs in second. So mm -hmm. reverse engineer that, and then you can map out your calendar very clearly from Monday to Friday of what it's going to take for you to get to that goal. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the straightforward way to do it. My brain doesn't always work that way. So sometimes I just need to do a full brain dump of every single task that I can come up with and just get it all out. So that's going to be like, oh, remember to change the coffee filter. And like, it's, it's going to be stuff that's inane and, and unnecessary, but I just need to get it all out of my head first. So I can like fill up two pages with things that I think I should do. And then I go back and look at that based on the goals. Like, okay, so what really matters here? What are the things that are going to actively move me toward that result? And is, do I really feel like this is a worthy use of my time and energy? Mm -hmm. So both of those approaches, I kind of find like I play within the two, just depending on where I'm at in that moment. Awesome. What's one of the best books you've read? Ooh, um, let's see. I, I keep thinking the title good to great, but it's not, it's, that's a great book. It's not that book. This is a book by, um, Steve Chandler and it gives him, I should I'll, I'll look it up so that you can put it in the show notes for mm -hmm. sure. But yeah. I love because it, um, it's kind of the same premise as good to great. It's sort of like, these are the things that we kind of accept and tolerate in our lives. These are our opportunities, the, the other things that we could have, and kind of like giving you these really, um, almost black and white options to think like, mm -hmm. do you want this way? Or do you want that way? And I love sometimes my brain's just I just need like, just give me two choices. <laughs> like once it's a yes or it's a no. Right. Um, and so, um, I, I like the book for that reason. Awesome. What does it mean to you to make an impact? It means that I am showing up and living the work that I believe in it. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about being the example. It's about like living my life in a way that I feel is something that other people energetically would benefit from and that that energy will continue to trickle out in other people and in the world. Yeah. Where can we connect with you? Um, my website is lindsaybrownson.com and I have a podcast called Be Brilliant in Your Business. We are working on season nine right now, so that should be coming out pretty soon. Um, and it's a mix of uh, interviews, conversations with business owners. I call it creative pep talks and practical tools to help business owners get energized and organized. So I would love for people to check that out. You can find that on my website as well. Cool. Thank you, Lindsay, so much for being here. Thank you, Rachel. This was so fun. <laughs>